Okay, this is the percutaneous dilatational tracheostomy station. First of all, we're going to go through it, and then you guys get to have a go. Okay, so um, it's basically um, a modified Seldinger technique. Um, the patient, this is an elective procedure. The patient's given consent. They're anaesthetized and paralyzed. This is the head of the patient here, and they've got an ET tube in. We've pre-oxygenated. They've got entitled CO2 to confirm airway placement. Um, you get all of your kit ready, and you, we normally do it with um, three personnel involved, a operator um, doing the procedure, someone doing the airway, and someone doing the bronchoscopy. Um, so the first thing to do is to get the position of the patient. They're going to have their head extended, usually a towel between the shoulder blades, opening everything up and having a good explosion. Um, we usually use video laryngoscopy to help because it's not obviously the suboptimal position for the airway to be in. Then you'll check the anatomy, prep the skin, and infiltrate local and adrenaline into the area where you're going to be going. I'm not going to go over the anatomy in detail, but on these models you can feel that we've got clavicles, we've got a sternal notch and a sternum here. This is the, um, the thyroid membrane here, and there's a cricoid um, the cartilage you can feel here. I suggest a technique where you put your thumb and your middle finger on either side of the cricoid cartilage and your index finger in the sternal notch. That forms a triangle. If you go in the middle of that triangle, that's roughly between the first and second tracheal rings, and that works depend like, irrespective of the length of the person's neck. It's a pretty good way of doing it. Then when you're actually doing it, keep holding the uh, cricoid ring at all times. That stabilizes the trachea, stops it slipping from one side to the other, and gives you a tactile feeling of where the midline is, so you get the needle going down in the middle. So once you've infiltrated with local, and you might then put your local anesthetic needle into the airway just to confirm you're in the middle, the next thing is to uh, pull the airway back. So the person doing the airway under direct, um, under video laryngoscopy will deflate the cuff, pull the cuff up so it's just above the cords, reinflate the cuff and have it kept there in, in situ you for the rest of it. The other way of doing it is to put the laryngoscope in, um, sorry, the bronchoscope in directly now, putting the bronchoscope in to the end of the ET tube, then go about an extra inch be beyond it. Um, then you switch the, uh, the lights off and you uh, pull the tube and the bronch on block back until the light is in the spot where you're going to make your incision. Then you know basically that you won't be sticking your needle into the tube. Then you can pull the bronch back into the tube and keep it there and watch the whole thing going on live. Then you will introduce your um, cannula over needle into that spot, basically perpendicular to the skin. Um, and you'll directly visualize it with the bronchoscope with the needle and the cannula going into the airway. Slide the cannula off the end. Um, just leave the cannula in the airway. Introduce the uh, guide wire down that. Once the guide wire is in, then you need to make an incision with the scalpel. I'd suggest making a vertical incision. Um, I previously have made horizontal and lots of people suggest that, but vertical avoids more vascular structures and um, you can argue that the toss for doing either way is not, not one way is right. You make an incision that's about 1.5 centimetres in, in, in distance. You then put the small dilator over the guide wire. That goes in up to the hilt and you can uh, visualise that with the bronchoscope as well. That comes out, the guide wire stays in. And then this, um, the cooked blue rhino dilator with the inner um, dilator inside of it, remembering to put this in from the front rather than from the back. And this goes in until it reaches a stop point, which is clearly marked here. That then slides in. You can either do an overhand technique or an underhand technique. Both, are, both of them are equally valid. Um, this is hydrophilically activated, so normally you'd have put some water on this, and that makes it very slippery, and it slides in nicely. So once that dilator's in, then you take that out um, completely with the white and the blue, just leaving the guide wire in, and you introduce your trachea with this um, purple um, uh, in a uh, cannula with it, and that just goes over the um, over the guide over the guide wire and, and slots into the airway. And you keep hold of the trachea, um, to keep hold of the the trachea, remove the purple um, in a cannula and you can then put the bronchoscope down there, suction any blood and secretions up, and, and carry on. And then there's an inner cannula that goes in that, and tidal CO2 to confirm that you're in the airway. All right, uh, Ben, would you like to do the tracky? Um, John, would you like to do the airway and bronch? And then we can swap over afterwards and you can both get right. So have a feel for, so this is the thyroid cartilage here. This is the cricoid cartilage below that. And that's the sternal notch. So if with your um, left hand, you put your um, middle finger and thumb on the, the cricoid there. And you put your 
that right on the in the sternal notch. So that forms a triangle, and then in the middle of that triangle is where the hole will be that you'll go. So that's so that. Sort of goes back a bit, so you do this first. Yeah, so it's in the middle of that. So if you're making a triangle like that, then in the middle of that triangle is where you'd between this, that's between the sort of first and second or second and third tracheal rings. Okay. Lovely. So you can now bring your bronch back a bit even further, so it's protected. Okay. So we're going around here. Yep. Perfect. Often put a bit of saline in the syringe so you can see it bubbling. Okay, there you go. There's Store. your cannula. Perfect. Right in the midline. And right in there. Yeah, there you go. If it's especially tricky if you get lube on your fingers to feed the guide wire. That's great. That's all you need to do there. So then just take the whole housing off the guide wire. Take the saw off. And you go. And take the cannula out and leave the guide wire in. Perfect. Now the knife would be the next thing. So incision, um, sort of one centimeter up and one centimeter down. Um, in the, I normally do it vertically. I'm looking at one of the slickest proceduralists of the day here. This is good. Perfect. Right in the middle. Okay, you're ready to go. So at this point, maybe have some gauze to go over here because some blood and air will come up, and we're all wearing glasses, obviously personal protective equipment. Airway operator as well. Okay. That's right. Now you want to get this white line just at the back of this bit. That's that's perfect. Okay. And then just slide the whole thing in one slow, controlled movement. Um, perfect. And keep sliding, sliding till you get to the black line here. Okay. Perfect. Yeah. Okay. And then now, leave the wire in. And the white thing in on this okay. in this particular set. That's how this set works. Okay, now here's your um, trackie. It's already been, the cuff's been tested. I usually slick it back so that it's like in a narrow shape and put some lube on it so it'll slick in and go in a bit more smoothly. Now the okay. white thing's going to come out as well. Yeah. Again, there'll be some blood at this point. You can even disconnect the ventilator at this point if you wanted to stop extra stuff blowing around. Okay, and then just uh, Okay, and this again is one slow slip movement. There's a bit of a clunk as yeah. the balloon goes into the trachea, and that's normal. There is an alternative to this, is, is to leave that white sticker on and use the next size yep. down. Yeah. Perfect. Dilator, so. Yep, and that's what these things are for, exactly. So it then comes out. Keep holding the um, trachea at this point. There we go. Okay. Okay. Now John goes down, checks that he's in the lungs. That's perfect. That's what the lungs look like in this model. <laughs> <laughs> and um, at, you're also suctioning up blood and sputum and stuff that's been created. And then we hook on, get entitled CO2 so we know we're definitely back. Then John goes, he puts his bronch back up to the airway and he goes down and he goes just above where the cuff is and he suctions up any secretions and stuff that's there, makes it nice and clean. So when the cuff next goes down, those secretions don't go down into the lungs. Yeah. And then he comes back up, he has a look at the vocal cords to see what damage has happened to the vocal cords at that point. Mm -hmm. And then he'll do direct laryngoscopy at the end to see what grade airway it is, and that'll be part of your tracky sheet that goes on the wall. Um, as part of the protection.